we don't fight for human rights, if we're not concerned about human rights, it basically means that we've denied our humanity. It means that we don't value who we are. It means that we don't want to be the best that we can be. It means that we are pressed on every side and we're just content to be fit into molds that others prepare for us. Our rights allows us to be the best that we can be. Freedom from fear, freedom from arbitrary arrest, freedom from torture, freedom from uh, disappearance. That's what human rights means to me. And uh, I associate uh, very intimately uh, with those who at one time in my own life uh, were afraid of uh, what absence of human rights meant. لانه مضيت 25 عام في السجن ولاحظت ورايت ما يتعرض له الانسان من ظلم ومن حرمان ومن قمع داخل السجن خصوصا ان السجن تدخل طبقات الفاقره في العالم العربي خصوصا ممبر ديكتاتور حاكميتن اصلا چون ولدم مينين اتا انام عائلهم قوشن قلملرم Benim halkım devamlı zulüm aslında. Sözleş erkilliği yok. Ee, özünün mətbuat erkilliği yok. Dünyada insanlığa erişken, erişki tegeşlik boğun hiç kandak erkilliği yok. Bir halkının perzenti buluş süptüm bilen. Aşını kündün künge his kılışkı başladım. Halkımının iktisadi cahattin çekinişi, halkımının veyran buluşu, turmulağı çüşüşü, ölüm cezası hüküm kılınışı, balılanın küçü dijitim kılışı, each child is entitled to rights within their own constitutions, including in my own country, and that rights needs to be realized without discrimination. And I think when we look at children, a lot of the times we hear that they are, you know, the future of our nation, but they are not. If you compromise their present, then they can never be, you know, grow up to be the leaders in the future or active citizens. The human rights means right to be human. I'm saying this in the context of uh, our own community Dalits have been treated as inhuman for several generations. Caste is not cultural, it is not anything traditional, it is criminal in its nature and hence uh, when there is caste and the stratification based on caste existing then there's no question of human rights. Living where I do in Texas, I see the efforts of people trying to come into the United States to find a better life. And I see the way they are treated when they are caught and when they are sent back um, and how they are treated before they're sent back. And it's, it's painful to see the indignity that other human beings have to endure to stay alive. Pero entonces, ¿qué me llevó a mí a comprometerme en el, en el tema de los derechos humanos? El sufrimiento. Pero no nada más, repito, a quedarme a dar un consuelo y un consejo. No. Dije, nos tenemos que mover pero aprenderme a mover junto con el que está sufriendo. No yo hacer todo, porque eso no sirve para mucho. Junto con el que sufre. Me e y necesitamos cambiar las estructuras que causan esto. Y lo vamos a hacer con los que las están sufriendo, las entienden, que son los pobres. Esto es lo más hermoso. Being discriminated as an LGBT person, a gay man in a country like Uganda, that is very uh, homophobic. My own discrimination exposed me to so many injustices. And I understood that I don't have to sit back and relax, but I have to stand up and speak up. And also by telling my story, people will listen and understand. And when people understand my story, they get to know me and they get to see me as any other person En la humanidad hay mucha población que tiene hambre, pero necesitamos también construir espacios de hambre de justicia. 
Si una persona tiene hambre y llena su estómago, esa persona eh, ha dado una respuesta material. Cuando descubrimos y nos comprometemos para resolver el hambre de los demás, damos una respuesta ética y espiritual. Y a veces yo pienso que yo no puedo vivir sin esta trabajo. Yo no puedo vivir без э, э, чувства помогать людям. Э, наверное, это жизнь моя. Once you've seen people get shot or beaten on the streets or killed, um, once you've interviewed your first torture victim, you know that you'll never be able to live your life out knowing that you saw those injustices and you didn't do anything to try and stop them from happening. Those who do not have freedom very badly need the support of those who have. And so it is a, a moral obligation of free nations and free people to assist those who do not have freedom. And in the end, in the long run, if the freedom is lost elsewhere, you can lose it yourself in your own country. My mind uh, goes immediately to situations like in Myanmar with the Rohingya or the Muslims or uh, some religious uh, violence, uh, religious based, ethnic based violence around the world. Once despotism, dictatorship or racism starts there is no end to it. It starts with a few individuals, then it moves to the second group, third group, fourth group, until it reaches to all of us. If anybody around the world feels that grievances in Iraq is not their concern, there will be a day when the, these grievances, the despotism, the terrorism will reach to them. Finish it at its origin. All the world should be worried about the well-being of everybody. In my own country, where in the Holocaust so many Jewish Hungarians and also many, many Roma Hungarians were killed, one would hope that at least after that there is no anti-Semitism and anti-Gypsyism. And it's there. And it's unbelievable. And it shows that we humans are potential monsters and in a way it's frightening, it's saddening, but it should help us to be self-reflective. If not for historical social circumstances, that could be you instead of who you are, safe and warm and privileged, you could be the one with no home if history had been a little bit different. So we will be witnessing more and more of, uh, of uh, uh, violence from the government officials, uh, uh, discrimination, uh, 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 attempts to undermine the basic, uh, basic civil liberties. Uh, and this will be a challenge for uh, many people who respect those rights. In our current time, you know, 2016 and beyond, suddenly human rights is not a priority issue. Suddenly human rights is on the back burner. And security, anti-radicalization, anti-extremism, anti-terrorism is suddenly the priority. And unfortunately, what a lot of these world leaders don't understand is that these things go hand in hand. You can't bomb people into democracy. You can't bomb people into human rights. If you want human rights, you support civil society. You support the human rights defenders. Un pueblo que se preocupa por guardar la igualdad, o sea, el respeto de los derechos humanos de todos, es un pueblo que tiene paz. Si queremos la paz, respetemos profundamente y trabajemos y anchémonos por el respeto a los derechos humanos. Even if it's difficult, even if our family members say, say a racist comment, or our lover, or our best friend, or respected colleague, or boss, 
we still need to come up saying that this is wrong. How did you mean that? We need to immediately question such things. Look what is going on around. Publish it. Uh, raise public awareness. Help other people who need help and write about it. Uh, because others should see their peers, their neighbors doing these good things. Uh, um, being proud of that. Он был совсем не виновен. Этот э, просто так э, пришли и арестовали, и они хотели тоже арестовать меня. И э, э, тогда э, я видела, что э, двери у меня были люди, которые я не знаю этого людь людей. Я не я не знала это людей. Просто э, один э, очень э, старый э, мужчина, э, у него, наверное, было 75-80 лет, он э, пришел э, к моему дому, он э, принес, принес с собой сыр и э, хлеб. Он ничего не мог принести меня, он хотел помогать мне. Это э, э, совсем другое чувство, видеть людей, которые они хотят помогать тебе, у них нет силы. Но они хочет помогать тебе. Это э, была большая честь для меня. Sometimes in my country, some people say that why should I do something because I'm such an ordinary person, I'm a layman and I can't change the world, I can't change history. But this is a very big mistake because if most people think the same way, then nobody does anything. So it is very important to understand that even the most ordinary people, even, even the youngest ones, can always do something. And if, if everybody does uh, his or her duty, no matter how small, this will change the world. I have a big dream of seeing a world where every person loves the other person the way they are and treats each one equally despite of who they choose to love. I'm seeing it to a future where power will not be determined by how much you can pollute the environment. Power will not be determined by how much you can destroy. But power will be des described and determined by how much love we have in our heart. My dream for the future is to have a different Iraq. An Iraq that should have been created in the first place after the war. An Iraq where women do not have to fight desperately for their human rights. ويسود العدل والاستقرار والعدالة بين الشعوب وتعود العلاقات بين الشعوب كاملة بدون فيزا من الأيغر خلق من البرزنت لما أشكشي برينت سنب أقواتكان ونن سنب أقواتكان بالالامو أندش كماي أطامنا ترمغ أكتدو أقامنا أكتدو ما تلد سوزلاد دي أو تلد سوزلاد دي ديمي Aşı balılarımın hatırcam, muşu demokratiye devletlerdik balılardık, muşu Norvegiyadık balılardık, bəxtlik balılardık aşılarımın hoşalı kuram, özü hatırcam özükken de olayım. Şahs ya şu bu dramini, ya meçtayı, şahs etad, bir vaya meçtamaya vermutsa nazad. E pradajat maldiyo. Whether it happens in my generation or the next, I hope that we get to a point where we don't have to be afraid of going to sleep because we worry about what's going to come the next day. I want, I want to see a world, or at least I want my nieces and nephews to see a world that is free from hate, that is free from fear, but more importantly, it's free from helplessness. I want them to live in a world where they feel powerful, where they feel like they matter, and where they feel like 
they can make a difference.